the number of elections it holds. There has to be uh, true access to the electoral process uh, without intimidation, without fear of reprisal, uh, and with a media that is free to um, say what they want, uh, regardless of whether the government agrees uh, or, or not uh, with their conclusions. And there ought to be a separation of power. Uh, there is no separation of power to speak of right now. The Cambodian government controls the judiciary system, and it's the ju judiciary system that I personally am most con concerned about, and I think we'll hear about. Um, the, uh, in many respects, the State Department feels that uh, there is uh, rampant corruption within the judiciary system, that it, is, uh, that it renders unequal justice. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, some of the, um, uh, the, the recent cases have appear to be uh, politically motivated. Uh, that um, uh, it is a, they're trumped up charges, so defamation or whatever, uh, that would never hold water in, in uh, courts in a, uh, where there was an independent uh, and professional judiciary. Uh, now, Cambodian authorities in some cases have been cooperating with U.S. law enforcement in capturing American, uh, that Americans that have been committing crimes, particularly sex crimes in Cambodia, they've been bringing them to justice in the United States. I asked, wouldn't it be better, to, wouldn't it be more severe punishment to simply throw them in jail in Cambodia? Uh, that would be the case, except that it's just too easy to pay off a judge, apparently, in Cambodia, so we're better off prosecuting in the United States. Uh, we've read some notorious stories about uh, uh, HIV-infected Cambodians uh, being uh, moved, uh, obviously, against their will, although that may be more of a land rights issue, uh, and uh, the taking of land that becomes valuable because of development in the cities and so on is, is another issue. We won't get into that, but uh, uh, it's a serious one. Um, Cambodia has been active in peacekeeping missions, particularly in Sudan, and I think they ought to be recognized and applauded for that. Clearing out landmines in southern Sudan is a heroic thing to be doing, and we appreciate the fact that the Cambodian government has taken the initiative. Uh, Adam West, uh, uh, Mr. West, who uh, works uh, on Cambodia and the State Department is here and he's informed us and been encouraging of that. Uh, so uh, the purpose of this hearing of course is to better gain a better understanding of the problems Cambodia is facing, to bring attention to human rights abuses, to shed, government, to shed light on the government's repressive practices. Um, as the chairman is, uh, is well aware, uh, that's why he put so much effort into human rights issues. He and his mentor, uh, Joe Mopley, understand this is a global village that we are part of, and uh, what happens in one part of the world uh, should affect us all. And we here in the United States, well, we have been blessed with uh, personal security and individual freedoms. We do have a moral responsibility. I think to assist the Cambodian people to achieve the kind of life to which we all aspire. Uh, it's important to recognize that three out of the four witnesses today are native Cambodians uh, who are all concerned about the fate of their beloved country. They love their country and that's why they are here. Uh, they are eager for the United States and the international community to show support and assistance for their struggle for a better life in Cambodia and that's why the Tom Lantos Human Rights Caucus is so important. Um, a few months ago, I had the honor of meeting a woman who I learned to admire for her honesty, fearlessness, and her pursuit of justice. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad that uh, Mu Sukua uh, is going to uh, be testifying. Uh, Mrs. Mu is a member of the Sam Ramsey Party. Ramsey Party is an opposition party in Cambodia, uh, and it provides important opposition. Um, and it should be respected and have access, full access to the democratic uh, process in Cambodia without fear of intimidation. Um, she's chosen a harder and less rewarding path in life uh, than many uh, because she is very capable, but she's chosen uh, politics, public service. Uh, and um, she is dedicated to an ideal, and that's an ideal 
that uh, uh, believes that all humans are created equal, should be treated as such. That's the ideal that our country stands for. So uh, uh, with that, uh, I uh, again appreciate you having the hearing, uh, Chairman McGovern, and I want to thank the witnesses for being here, my colleagues, and uh, uh, the audience present who uh, understand how important this issue is. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Moran. I appreciate your statement. We're going to yield to Mr. Royce from California. I know he has uh, another appointment, but we'll go ahead and have him make a statement. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for yielding. And I, I did have an opportunity, Mr. Chairman, to meet with um, uh, the parliamentarian Sue uh, uh, Koya, Musa Koya. And I, I wanted to express just um, the observation that uh, she is really risking much to be with us today. Uh, we know a lot about uh, the corruption that exists in our country, and in particular, the fact that the regime uh, stripped her of her parliamentary immunity uh, and, and that her own attorney was intimidated and was threatened so that she did not have legal representation. Uh, and she was tried and convicted of op openly speaking out against the Prime Minister. Uh, and uh, so I, I thank her for her bravery. I also thank her for the work she's done in the past in terms of trying to expose something that I think a lot of journalists wrestle with. And that is why uh, the, the sex trafficking of, of girls in Cambodia gets so little international attention. And I think it's, it's something we all wrestle with. Um, uh, the, the fact of the matter is it's become so endemic. It, it is it's so absolutely uh, horrific. Uh, my own chief of staff, Amy Porter, spent uh, some weeks in Cambodia, uh, working with some of these children who were uh, trafficking victims. Uh, and talked to, to, not, not just about the cruelty to us when she got back from that trip, but the amount of corruption on the part of the government. And that, indeed, is why it continues. Uh, and it's, it's a question of how do you bring pressure on a government uh, that decides uh, that it is not going to uh, be under the rule of law. Uh, the attempts to do that, the attempts uh, in her position as a parliamentarian to call attention to this and as a former minister uh, in the government uh, speaking on, on women's issues, uh, have, has only served to, uh, uh, to bring uh, a great deal of governmental pressure down on this particular parliamentarian. But in the meantime, we have this as an ongoing, pervasive problem uh, in the society. As Voice of America reports, uh, you know, these girls are sold into brothels, forced to work as sex slaves, and their life is told by Von Sina, who was lured away from her village and into, into slavery at the age of 13, is a living hell. She was, she was locked in a cellar and tortured with electric shocks and starved if she didn't do exactly as she was told. So stories like this are heartbreaking. They're all too common. The question is, what can we do here in the U.S. in order to elevate this issue, in order to bring the kind of pressure to bear on a country that we know it's going to be hard. I mean. 20,000 people last year were kicked off of their land and their, and their property simply confiscated by the government. You can have 130 families on a weekend push off of their land and the, 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 those who are friends in the government end up with the property. So that's the type of thing that's, that's going on as we speak in Cambodia. The question for us is in the middle of all of this incredible corruption and dysfunction, that occurs with those who were originally involved in Pol Pot and now are involved in this government. How at the end of the day do you at least organize enough international attention and enough concern by the media that we put an end to what's happening to these girls in Cambodia? And so I thank the chairman for holding this hearing and I thank the witnesses, uh, especially for their bravery. Thank you very much, Mr. Royce. Uh, Hillary Clinton says it takes a village, I say it takes a bigger room. Uh, we, to, to those, I mean, those people out in the hallway, you're more than welcome to sit on the table or on the floor or wherever you might want to, you're more than welcome to kind of come into the